guys, I'm Sherry coming at you today in Raid Shadow Legends. Welcome to the video, guys. I'm happy to have you here talking a little raid with me today. Uh, happy New Year, by the way. How is 2023 treating you guys so far here of, you know, a week or so into the month? Not even. Or if you're watching in the future, how is it treating you in the uh, in the future? So far, so good for me. I don't have New Year's resolutions, as I mentioned in a previous video, uh, but I think that just overall, and I hope that some of you guys, guys kind of have the same takeaway that I do, right? Overall, I just want to get better at self-care. In the morning, if my face is a little puffy, I'll put on an ice pack while doing my stomach crunches. And that doesn't mean I want, you know, uh, uh, foot massages and pampered, uh, you know, day spas. It means that I want to take a little bit of time out for my, my mental health. I want to meditate for like five minutes a day uh, because... I need to be grounded. And, and more so than that, not even, you know, just time off meditating and stuff like that. I also want to develop a, a little bit more of a rigid structure around my day uh, to help keep me on task and productive rather than wasting my time doing things that, you know, there's one thing about wasting time because you want to waste your time because you're watching, you know, a movie you love or, or going to a museum, whatever, whatever you're into, you know, uh, meeting a friend out for drinks, whatever, right? But there's another thing which is like supposed to be doing something else and you're distracting yourself by something else i want to stop that uh it's i think it's a problem with a lot of us right anyway guys enough about that how you like in sale sand devils necropolis how you like an artifact ascension i already told you guys my strategy but basically i am going through my most used art my best artifacts and my most used champions really starting with the boots ascending them seeing if i can get some lucky speed rolls on those artifacts and then i'm moving just one star ascension you don't need more than that at first to see what stat you get uh and god knows you're gonna get a lot of the stats that you don't want and actually there's a whole other conversation about why Ray Plarium added in Artifact Ascension instead of going uh, seven star artifacts uh, into the game and why that it was advantageous for Plarium. He knows. Kill him! But I think I want to have some guests on for that sort of conversation so you can get some most multiple uh, point of views. Anyway, guys, I have to give a big, big shout out here. The first channel that I saw this on was Time Stopper with a Y. I'll have a link to all these channels. But I also saw that Deadwood Jedi and uh, I'm sure like every content creator, Scratch, uh, put out videos on this si similar sort of strategy for soloing Sand Devil. And the biggest thing you need to know before we get into the strat here, guys, on Sand Devil's Necropolis is you do not need to be concerned concerned you know unless you're end 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 game you don't need to be overly concerned with uh, farming the later stages i showed you my stage 24 team uh you know especially if you have ninja stage 24 and 25 are, are really doable it does require certain champions though champions like cardial and mother cybel etc but really again to get these greater uh oils the superior oils excuse me uh the the highest difficulty right it, it's it don't be concerned if you're not getting them you're still going to be able to get four levels of artifact ascension on these artifacts and that's going to take you even if you are end game you're still going to need a million lesser oils uh, and then about uh, 500,000 greater oils to ascend your artifacts, right? I quit. Hold on. No hard feelings, man. So a little hyperbolic there, but seriously, guys, I am focusing personally. I'm focusing on like stage 14 and you know stay sometimes just stage like seven you know i just go in there and i'm just like whatever man just give me a bunch of lesser oils now you know every stage is going to be different that you're going to be focused on depending on which champions you want to use for this strategy okay going in with a great healer like an opera opera uh, clan father or an Urigrim, who we're going to show you in today's video uh is one option or you can go with a a, a champion who's a strong affinity matchup uh this is always a good thing unless you're running void right a strong affinity matchup against the stage that you would like to farm okay so i'm going to show you two of my personal favorites uh, i'm going to start with my main kind of strat here and that is going at stage 14 going into a force affinity stage here and again you, you do want to take note of how much energy it's costing on each stage and if you're at a threshold here of 12 to you know 14 just just obviously pay attention to how much you're spending and how much you're getting in each of these stages i'll also have a link for you guys so you can see all the drop rates and stuff like that in the description below this video stage 14 i'm running uh not Irigrim on stage 14 i'm running a strong affinity and it's none other than if i can take Irigrim out where what am i what am i doing man it's my man walking tomb drank now listen there's a lot of champions that can do this uh, you're looking for champions that are bringing an hp burn 
uh, or bringing poisons on the A1, essentially, right? And we're going to put them in regeneration in immortal uh, sets. So a four-piece regen and a two-piece immortal. We're going to build them with about, you know, depending on the stage, roughly around 250 or so, 300 resist. Some champions, such as Walking Tomb Drang, you can get by with really no resist, but it's a nice to have to resist that decreased speed and the decreased accuracy. Uh, on the HP burn on Walking Tomb Drang, it can't be resisted anyway, so the accuracy is not that big of an issue being reduced. Uh, but uh, we do have the instant activation on the A1 as well. So either way, guys, accuracy to land their poisons or their HP burns. Uh, and then some HP so they have enough HP to heal back up with the Immortal in the Regeneration set. And then the rest is, it, it's easy, right? So, uh, and you can use a strategy with champions like Eleanor champions like Tyron Ixlamore, uh, the champions like Sathalia, they can all do this, guys. They can all do this over in Clanfather, right? Uh, so let me go ahead and show you the build really quickly first. It's going to be very similar on both champions. There are There is no certain stat threshold because, of course, every level is going to be a little bit different there, and you can get by with, well, surprisingly, I'll show you Irigrim first, right? Surprisingly, these achievable stats here for a lot of accounts, right? Not every account. And if you can't achieve these stats, just go to an earlier stage. Again, they're lesser oils anyway. You're going to need them no matter what. So uh, as much HP as we can load on him, we have 323 accuracy. We have 257 on, or excuse me, 323 resist, 257 accuracy, and then 213 speed. That's the build that we have on Urigrim with, again, regen and immortal. We have, uh, I'm sure, HP on all the accessories. I stand corrected. HP, HP, and then resist on the uh, amulet. And then, of course, we have HP and more HP on the chest and the gauntlets. And then, again, we're just looking for speed and a little bit of accuracy resistance as substats uh, after that. Walking Tomb Drang is very similar. You can see a lot of HP on him, some speed, some resist, a little bit of accuracy. That's, that's really it here, okay? Uh, so... Really, really cool, really strong. Now, if you're not getting it done, if your team is, is dying, right, you might have to redo your masteries. Now, I just want to pause really quickly. Actually, you know, I'll talk about this during the run. Uh, not about the masteries, but about uh, what type of champions you want to use if you're already kind of mid-late game, uh, at least my strategy and why I'm using Walking Troom Drang on my main account as my main farmer. Offense tree, right? I want to point out some important masteries here. Life Drinker. This is going to heal by 5% of the damage inflicted when attacking with 50% HP or less to keep your champion alive. These are solo masteries, right? Commonly used on all solo runs. Wrath of the Slain. Increased damage inflicted by 5% for each dead ally. Stacks up to 10%. Most importantly, though, Spirit Haste. Increased speed by 8% for each dead ally. Extra 24 speed. 24 speed is amazing. Also, Opportunist, uh, extra damage against targets with sleep. I don't have that here on Walking Tomb Drang, but obviously, Sand Devil is going to be putting sleep on himself, so extra 12% damage right there as well. War Master helps a little bit on the damage as well. It's not necessary, though. You don't have to have War Master. You could even go down and pick up Unshakable if you need it for the extra resist. Whirlwind of Death is usually what we're getting on these solo farmers but we're not going to be killing anybody uh against sand devil so we don't need that here anyway those are the masteries those are the builds on these champions again immortal and regen are so incredibly strong inside this game i cannot stress it enough really really important sets especially regeneration because that's the most important one being a four piece set now as we go into stage 14 here you guys will see how it works obviously we're going to be healing our, and restoring our max hp in between turns uh it, there's a little bit of rng involved here with uh you know activating the hp burns but if you can get into a nice kind of groove uh it will go pretty fast you're looking at like a three minute farm or so you know with this with this particular level with this particular build on this particular champion how many times is this guy gonna say particular in this particular video is y'all right upstairs? Why am I using Walking Tomb Drang? First of all, he's a great champion for this. You know, I've mentioned quite a few others. I'll link you their videos as, as well. But the, the build is essentially kind of the same. The same idea, right? Uh, they cannot be one-shot by the A3 at these lower levels. So we can easily keep them alive just by healing them back up in between, really. And resisting the, the debuffs when we can uh, helps as well. So you can see, I mean, things are moving along fairly nicely here. I'm using Walking Tomb Drang. Uh, and if I didn't, if I was already using Walking Tomb Drang anywhere else in the game, I wouldn't be using him here, right? Because you really do have to change the build of a champion quite significantly if, uh, in order to build them in a regen and immortal set, because you're not really running too many champions in regen and immortal, uh, in different areas of the game, right? It's very specific to soloing content is what I'm trying to say. So you don't want to ruin your build on a champion that you're using everywhere else. So... 
the reason I'm looking at these champions, you know, or I would build two Eleanor Rills if I was lucky enough to have two of them, you know, or here a Grim, who we're going to see in just a moment here. I'm not going to keep you the entire run, but you guys will get the point. The reason I like these champions is because I'm not using them, and they're solid champions, don't get me wrong, maybe you are using them, but I like to go for a champion that I'm not using anywhere else, and they become a solo specialist, right? They become the closer who I'm bringing in only for the ninth inning on my account, uh, just to deal with one particular boss, that way I can build them in this build and I'm not going to be frustrated when I have to change the artifacts around I'm going to save silver right in the long run so you guys kind of get the point here right things are moving along nicely I'll come to you at the end of this one we'll quickly watch your grim and we'll call it a video I'll be right back all right guys here we go finishing up the run I said three minutes three minutes and five seconds and again, it's just a really, really solid strategy to go ahead and farm uh, to get my artifacts ascended at least four levels, and I can focus later on on stage 24. Let me go ahead and show you, especially for earlier stages, again, nothing wrong. This this will work with stage 9, stage 10, stage 11 in that area with the build that I showed you on Eurogrim. So let me go ahead and make that switch, and we'll, uh, we'll run the same thing, and you'll see how the poisons on the A1 of Eurogrim, and by the way, I don't know if Walking Tomb Drang, if I shut off his A3, uh, but I would probably shut off the A3 ability there. I'm not going to shut off any of the abilities on, it will just make it run a little bit faster is the reason I would do that, by the way. It will still work either way. Uh, I'm not shutting off any abilities on Yurgrim because he has that great heal on the A2. He's bringing poisons on the A1 and he has poisons on the A3. So he really does suit this boss very well, even though he does not have that instant activation. Of course, champions like, uh, you know, any, any champion with instant activation, there's quite a lot of them out there are going to be king against this boss and really any boss like we were we learned that early from ninja right and he's still really the top choice i would say for a lot of players who are lucky enough to have him uh for this particular dungeon hey guys i'm not gonna make you watch your grim for five minutes but i will show you the final result i'll be right back all right guys here we go Eight minutes and 40 seconds, so of course taking a little bit longer because, you know, the RNG of the poisons landing off of that A1 or having that A3 on the cooldown when the Sand Devil is asleep. But eventually we're going to get it done here and it looks like there he goes. So guys, this is by far the best strategy for soloing, even if you just have to turn it on auto overnight or something like that on the PC client uh, or on the phone in your bedroom on the charger. Uh, it's a nice, easy way to farm up those potions. Guys, thank you so much for watching the content here. If you enjoy the content invite you to subscribe to the channel give a thumbs up i never really say that ever on the channel but i did hear uh, from youtube officially that if you thumbs up a video you get a 11 percent more likelihood uh to be suggested that content that content from that channel in the near future so uh man maybe thumbs up if you like the content or maybe thumbs down if you don't want to see it again guys thank you and as always take care guys